Now I'm going to make some cuts for my box. So I have these four pieces of cedar that will make a nice shallow box. Um, they're already cut to length. All I have to do is miter them, uh, but that's no big deal. It's only four pieces. But what I want to do is I want to make a box with a bottom, and I don't want to see the bottom from the, the side of the box. So if you think of like um, any drawer in your kitchen or a dresser drawer, usually the bottom is not just nailed to the bottom of the frame, but it's sort of set in there. And the way that you do that is you cut a groove down towards the bottom of the board that's big enough for that to fit into. So I'm going to use this as the bottom panel, it's plenty big, and I'm going to cut a groove in all four of these pieces. Now the blade is an eighth inch thick. This plywood is a little thicker than an eighth inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make several passes. I'm going to set this up to be about where I want it. So I'm going to leave myself, oh, about eighth to three sixteenths of an inch of thickness below the bottom, just for strength. And then I'm going to go ahead and let that table saw blade go into the cedar that I'm cutting about halfway. So again, it's about, ah, it's about half an inch. So I have this all set up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten my feather board to keep that piece of wood that I'm passing over the blade in just the right spot, like I did before. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pass all four of these over the blade, one right after the other so that I make the same cut in the same place on all four boards. Then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump the fence over a little bit and pass them over again until I'm sure that this piece of plywood fits in the groove of that box. bottom panel will fit right in there. So I can trap that to be the bottom of the box. Now what I need to do is cut all these pieces to length and miter them so that I can make my box. And then once I've done that, I can determine the dimensions of this and cut it really quick and trap it in there, clamp the whole thing together and glue it. So now it's time to glue these pieces together. I have mitered the four sides of my box and I have made my bottom board to fit. And I've even dry fit it before I started the video to make sure that everything fits and is square. Uh, and I've gathered a couple things that I'm gonna need. So I've got my wood glue. I have a bucket with a little bit of water in it to clean up residual glue. And I have my band clamp set up here uh, so that when I get all of the pieces in place, I can tighten that up and that'll keep the pieces just so until the glue dries. Now, I have this handy thing in the shop to show you how to set these band clamps up if for some reason they get unthreaded because they can be very, very confusing. Um, and I need this to remember as well. So this is always bumping around in the shop. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this together. It's going to be messy for a second and then I will clean it up before I use the band clamp. Um, oh, and um, I also have at my disposal a rubber mallet so that I can adjust this box if I need to. As far as wood glue goes, you want to use enough that it gets stuck to the two surfaces you're trying to glue together. So using just a tiny bit of glue, sometimes you're not going to be uh, very happy with the results. 
Now uh, I've also put down some newspaper because I'm gonna slop glue around here. And I'm also slopping it all over the box, so I'm gonna have to clean that up in a second. Wood glue is much stronger than nails in a process like this. I will put a few nails in this box when I'm all done, probably, um, but I'll wait until the glue dries to do that. All right, so now I'm gonna just clean up that excess glue a little bit. It's gonna ooze out again when I squeeze the sides together, but just so that I'm not getting it all over myself and my workpiece, I'll go ahead and wipe up my mess. Okay, so now I'm ready to tighten the clamp. So I'm gonna fish this through and I don't want it twisted. I want it to be flat all the way around. Once I have it pretty close, I'm gonna lift the band up to be in the center, from center to close to the top. Now I don't need wood, I don't need glue in the trough where that piece of plywood goes in there. I'm just gonna trap it in there. It's tight enough that it shouldn't wobble around. Now once I get to this point and the band is relatively tight and I'm ready to really clamp it, the way that this works is you pull on this until it clicks. Like that. And you can see the glue is oozing out of some of the corner pieces. That's what I want. When that glue oozes out, I know that I've gotten a good fit. I've got some in the corner there. So now I'm gonna go ahead again and just wipe that excess glue off with this old nasty sponge. It's really important to clean off the glue while it's wet because you almost can't sand glue off of wood once it dries. The glue is kind of stronger than the wood and it becomes a real hassle. So I recommend that you wipe everything up as you go. Now my joints aren't so good at the bottom. There's a little gap there, but I think I have enough connection that it's gonna stick and that's what they make putty and sandpaper for. <laughs> The last thing I'm gonna do is check it for square to see how I did. That's pretty good. It's pretty square that way. If you are mitering a box together and it is really out of square, you can sometimes adjust it, but it might also have to do with if you've cut one board long, slightly longer than another, it will be out of square. This corner doesn't look square to me. The clamp's kind of in the way. Can do it on the inside too. Oh, that's not bad. All right, probably a little bit of an optical illusion with that part of the clamp there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let this sit and dry until tomorrow, at which point I can run a couple nails in it, I can sand this more flat if there's a little bump, and then I'll make a lid. So before I make the lid for this box, I thought I'd finish it up real quick with a little sanding. Um, so you can see here that most of it was rough like this. This has still got the saw cut on the cedar. Um, the other three sides I've sanded in there a lot prettier and very smooth. And uh, I am using the stand-up belt sander to do that. So I'm gonna finish off this last side and like round out the corners a little bit, and then I'm gonna make a lid. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, uh, if you can see here, this belt has gotten really uh, clogged with uh, the cedar dust. Uh, cedar's a bit more, uh, hard it's a harder wood than pine it gets really clogged to clean that out we have this big thing that looks like a, a big giant pencil eraser and what you do is you turn on the sander and then you just basically sand the eraser and it takes all the, the gunk out of the belt so you can get a little more use out of the belt we don't have to change the belt so often watch how this you'll see it happen very satisfying. Okay, so I'm gonna sand up this last side of the box and then uh, we'll make a lid for it and be done. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm ready to make my lid. Uh, I've got my box, and I found a piece of plywood that is big enough. Um, when I measure the box, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the plywood to this dimension, um, and then I will trim it the other way on the crosscut saw. Now, uh, when I measure this distance of the box, it's slightly different from one end to the other. Probably because of sanding, maybe because I didn't glue it right together. Um, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch, but there is a slight difference. So I'm going to plan for that, and I'm going to cut it on the bigger measurement on the table saw. I'm going to cut it a little bit big, and then I will sand the lid to fit the box when I'm done. Uh, so I'm going to make my rip cut on the plywood and get the box lid to fit, and then I'm going to show you a trick to make the lid set down inside the box a little bit so that it stays put on the top of the box. Okay, so I've got my box and lid cut. M matches up pretty good. Now, the thing I want to do is see the lid, this is not much of a lid really, it slides around. If I was going to hinge it, that'd be okay. Um, but what I really want is for the lid to set in the box a little bit so that it can't really move off of there. So I don't need a hinge, it's just going to set down in. So what that means is that I need to take a chunk out of part of the thickness of the lid all the way around. There's a special set of blades for the table saw that I can use to do this called a dado set. And instead of being one singular blade, it's a whole bunch of blades and a round, two round blades and a whole bunch of sort of like wing shaped blades and you stack them up. And depending on how many of those you use with spacers, you can get a different width of cut. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. It's a very dangerous thing to use, um, and I would need to set the table saw up for you if you were going to use it, but I thought I would show it to you and, and tell you that we have it and, and show you what a good use for it is. It's also a really good thing to use if you were making bookcases and you wanted the shelf to set in the side of the bookcase a little bit. If you wanted to carve out a little notch for the shelf to go into, you would use a dado blade. This is our set of dado blades here. Uh, it's Freud brand. Um, you can insert your psychology joke here. Um, but I wanted to show you something. Even though I'd be setting this up for you, um, I'd probably ask you to figure this out before we set it up. Underneath the two main blades of the set, there is a diagram here. And this tells you how to combine the two main blades, the chippers and the spacers, to get specific measurements uh, in terms of the thickness or width of your cut. So obviously this is very dangerous. Instead of having one blade that takes an eighth of an inch, now we have two blades and a set of chippers and spacers, and it can take up to this much out of the cut. That is very dangerous and scary. Add to that the fact that we have no riving knife and no anti-kickback system we're, we're in a very dangerous territory here. So I'm gonna show you how to use this safely, but never do this by yourself, and you couldn't really, because I'd have to set it up for you. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to take a little bit of material off of all four sides of the bottom of the lid so that it sets down in the box. So I've set up my dado blade, and what I've done here is I've clamped a piece of scrap wood to the fence. Um, this is gonna keep the blade from messing up my fence 
because um, I can cut into the scrap wood. What I'm trying to do here is I'm going to I'm going to slowly raise the blade up. It's going to cut into this plywood ever so slightly. And I've even made a mark to tell myself how high I want the blade to be. Once I do that, I am going to pass this over the dado blade on all four sides to make my first cut. Now, the dado blade isn't wide enough. It only will, it'll only do this much width. And I need a little bit more because the sides of my cedar box are a little wider than that. So I'm gonna do this first and then I'm gonna bump the fence over and make a second pass. But my first pass, I want to be right up against the fence here. Uh, now, I am gonna use the crosscut guide to push this board. And I realized that in the table saw video, in the basic operations table saw video, and in the kickback video, I say never use these two fences at the same time. This is the only time when you would use the fence and the crosscut guide at the same time. And it's because there's nothing between the blade and the fence to shoot back out at you. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the saw on and while the blade is spinning, I'm going to raise it up until it comes to that pencil mark right there. And then I'll be able to start passing my board across it. sides of my box are about an inch and right now I have come in about three quarters of an inch so I'm gonna move the fence this direction away from the blade a little more than a quarter inch and I'm gonna repeat the whole process Look at that. Now I have a somewhat fitted lid. Fits right down inside of there. Not bad. So that's the kind of thing you can do with the dado blade. That last segment, I got the box lid caught up on something on the top of the table saw. Maybe you noticed if you were watching closely. Um, that was actually a very dangerous moment. I should have been working a little bit slower. The easiest way to get in trouble or have an accident in the shop is when you're doing something repetitive like that. Even four sides, even just four passes of the same thing can be dangerous because you start to get in a groove and you stop thinking about being safe. So remember that that is an easy way to have an accident is when you're repeating the same thing over and over and over again.